Welcome to Strangeville. Welcome to the channel. My name is Kevin Strange, 20 year veteran of the underground. I'm a cartoonist, novelist, independent filmmaker, and I'm a shot deep into a whiskey night with my good friend, Andrew. Welcome, Andrew, to the channel. Thank you. Welcome to uh, this episode. Uh, I, I invited my buddy, Andrew. Andrew, as you may recall, I don't have my shit. <clears throat> Andrew, as you may know, for those deep cut strange heads in the audience, uh, Andrew was the uh, the long arm zombie or the no arm zombie, uh, the zombie who gets beat to death with his arms in my uh, two thousand and seven film um, Dead Shit, and we did a uh, graphic novel of the same name that Andrew reprised his role. As the very very long armed uh, spaghetti yeah. arm zombie, <laughs> we embellished that scene. Got a little uh, extra. A little bit here. Let me still fuck with the camera a little bit. And uh, Andrew was also the um, the much beloved Nicholas in uh, my uh, 2009 feature film, uh, Colonel Kill Motherfuckers. Yes, the Dungeon Master Extreme. The Dungeon Master himself, Nicholas, the um, infamous masturbation uh, to. Uh, National Geographic magazine yes. scene with me uh, in the role of Wilhelm. Much loved amongst uh, family and friends. You can uh, hang on. We, we can. I can pull up a card for this. Um, you can become a patron uh, for only three dollars a month, and uh, you get access to those movies. You can watch uh, both of those films. You get. Uh, you can download this, those MP4s. Nice. Uh, along with all of my other films, uh, there on the Patreon and all of my comic books. And all of my novels for only three dollars a month. There Holy is God. a link in the description for that, but that's not what we're here uh, to talk about today, is it, Andrew? No, it's not. We are here to talk about this awesome He-Man Masters of the Universe uh, co uh, mini comic collection. Yeah, and uh, this is from Andrew's personal collection it of. Is. You got a large Masters of the Universe uh, collection. Huge fan ever since I was a kid. And this isn't the only book you have on the subject of um, Masters of the Universe, right? You That's got, correct. You got another another one book, two books? Uh, we got another three we can do at some point. Yeah. <laughs> three more books? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. What are those? Uh, so one of them is a crossover DC versus Masters of the Universe. Okay. So you got the DC heroes colliding with uh, the Masters of the Universe. That's a really okay. fun six-issue run. And then um, there's a series where it goes through uh, some of the back uh, prequel stuff. So you go back in like the history of before He Man got there, Hero and all the the older legends and stuff like that, and how Eternia came to be, basically. That's awesome. So that's really good. And then the other one is um, basically just like a origin stories from some of the big heroes and villains from the okay. from the series. Nice. Yeah. But today we're here to look at these now. Now explain what what the, what the mini comics of uh, of the He Man Masters of the Universe. Well, explain what that is. So, Masters of the Universe basically started as a toy line, and they only created the cartoon as a way to help sell you more got toys. It. You got it. So, I do have a toy here that I have. Uh, you can see that each figure comes packaged with a miniature comic behind it, so you kind of get the scale of how there. big the comic In the background, is. Background, this little, yeah. little comic. Oh yeah, that like ten pages. Yeah. But you always get a fun little tale. Usually, in featuring the character that you buy, but sometimes they just randomly packed them in there too. So um, this massive tome here, over a thousand pages, uh, collects every mini comic from the 1980s run. Uh, it goes through all of the She-Ra, the Princess of Power comics. Uh, then it also all has, those figures came with the mini comics. They too? all came with mini comics Woo! too. And then uh, it also does the the 1989 reboot run of He-Man in space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then much uh, maligned. They've got a, a few issues from the 2002 reboot series as well. So. Okay, I liked that one. I thought that one was real good. They yeah. focused a lot on the um, Snake Men in that one, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Yep, a, that was the big enemy from that one. Yeah, that was a good series. The action in it was really cool, too. Yeah. yeah. Well, <clears throat> we're going to dig right in, but yeah. uh, as the late, great Ed Piscor used to say, uh, these videos are brought to you by the comic books that we make, and I've got a new comic book out this um, month. Uh, this you is do. October. Okay. It is Monster Month. And uh, Kevin, how can I get this comic? I want well, it right now. Uh, I'm going to show you how. We're okay. going to play the. Uh, we're actually going to play the trailer. So we will return 
right after these uh, messages, gang. Um, I think I, I just passed it up. Yeah, there it is. Get ready for another trailer. <laughs> Get ready for another trailer piece, gang, for Strangeville Comics up in this motherfucker. Count Keefula. Strangeville Woo! Comics proudly Woo! presents Woo! the newest neck biter from psychosexual serial ink slinger, Kevin Strange. Old Count Dracula himself breezes into the peaceful town of Strangeville, gathers up a bevy of big booty bimbos, and promptly throws himself a blood bang party. The only thing he's missing? Nixon and Hogan's sweet, sweet Colombian smoke weed. 28 pages of full color fang banging splatter gore and bizarre sex. Available now, digitally at patreon.com slash Kevin Strange for only $3. Or pre order the print version for 12 bucks and get a free 11 by 17 Count Tefula poster. Pre order ends on Halloween, October 31st. Books ship in November. Don't get drain banged by buxom blood bitches, gang. Order yours now. Count Keefula, aka Dracula in Strangeville. All right, welcome back, gang. Let's dig into He Man and the Masters of the Universe mini comic collection. So we got a thousand pages here. Look at these end papers. You know me, I'm an end paper freak. And uh, that is a nice uh, yeah. Skeletor with the, what the, is that? The Terror Claws. The Terror Claws. Yeah, one of my favorite issues. We'll highlight that later. <laughs> and uh, an E-Man here just just barely dodging out of the way of Skeletor's uh, swing here. Um, so it's a thousand pages. Obviously, we don't, I mean, where do we even begin? You've got some highlights you'd like to uh, to go over and take a look at. We've got, let's do the credits here. Um, the project... Um, Advisement was Val Staples. The scans and restorations by Leanne Hanna, Rod, Rod Hanna, John Callis, Rachel Crockett, and Val Staples. Uh, interviews are conducted by Danielle Gelherder. And uh, trivia and additional research by Jukka Iskanian. Publisher was Mike Richardson. Collection editor was Daniel Chabon. Assistant Editor Ian Tucker, Design Jimmy Presler, and Digital Art Technician was Ryan Jorgensen, but each of these is drawn by a different art team, a uh, different uh, writer, uh, penciler, inker, letterer, and, and color, and yeah. colorist. Um, so that and that that's the, you know this is a very informative table of contents, mm -hmm. numbered uh, each as much as they can. Some of them they actually don't know. They like this one is yeah, written by so unknown. Say so. writer unknown, artist unknown. Yeah. But it's a really thorough um, indices or table of contents rather mm -hmm. uh, that will help you as much as you can find your favorite artists, find your favorite writers. Um, what 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 kind of gold you know you did you went digging into this thing to find some uh, some gems. What'd you find in there? Uh, so the first one I wanted to point out, if we go to page 253, uh, that'll be a story called The Dragon's Gift. Let's just appreciate some of these. Oh, yeah. Some of this art as we move yeah, through so here. The, I'm going to try to get a little bit of the glare off of the, um, off the pages there. Uh, 253? Yeah, 253. Uh, that one's called The Dragon's Gift. It was a, a childhood favorite of mine. Because that is one where He-Man actually meets up with the great dragon Granomir, and the dragon's going to grant him a spell that will help. Uh, I think let the the trees grow again or something like that. And uh, so this He-Man, yeah, uh, the cover's really cool. If you want to go back one, you get some monster fighting there since it is Monster Month. That's a gnarly, what is that, a cat monster? Uh, it's like some kind of ice beast or something like that, I think oh, is what they Look at this then, one up here. Yeah, that's the dragon there, so. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Love it. So man at arms gets zapped. Who is this? Just some random... Uh, yeah, just a cloaked figure. Just, just a random necromancer. He's mm -hmm. throwing spells, some, some random but sorcerer. Revealed to be Skeletor. Oh. He-Man gets zapped, 
Gotta, gotta love that. What is that? What is that little? Uh, uh, that's the uh, attack track. The attack track. You gotta love the attack yeah. track. And then Battle Cat here. Was that Telos? Mm -hmm. there, there's that thing from the cover. And then all these little goblin things. Yeah. Those things are awesome. Yeah, there you go. Ice Hacker is what they call the beast. <laughs> this thing? Mm -hmm. Is the Ice Hacker? <laughs> love it. Oh, so look at the dragon. Yeah, there's Granamir. Amazing. Damn gang. That's how you do it. That's how you do a fucking dragon. <laughs> so he lays down a challenge, says, I'll give you the knowledge that you seek, but you gotta chop down this special tree for me. And here he is at the tree. Mm -hmm. Attacked by a lion. Mm -hmm. A manticore. Gnarl! Oh it is a manticore. Gnarl! Growl! <laughs> Make short work of that. Yeah. Only takes two panels. Smashes his smashes some of his own tail. And then and the tree to, ain't having it. He's like, no. what are you doing? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I love this shot of like the side side face of the uh, of the tree man. <laughs> he's just so he's so fucking butthurt. He's so <laughs> fucking put out by yeah. he man even being there. Like, what are you doing? But then he does he does offer to sacrifice himself. So he says, Go ahead and take it, but he man being the guy he is, he can't sacrifice something so ancient. So he comes back empty handed. Oh, that's not good. He's pissed. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very awkward. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't have quite recognize that as He Man without the the concept of everything else. But and a nice interview with some of the creators from that issue too. Awesome. Just a thorough. Oh yeah. Yeah, As a, if you're a fan, you know, if you're you're our age in your or late 30s, early 40s, um, and you grew up with uh, Masters of the Universe figures and everything like this, is just such a delightful um, collection. What a what an awesome thing to put together. Was this standalone? Did this come with a uh, this book? Uh, yeah, it's just a standalone. Uh, it's still available on Amazon. If was you, it crowdfunded or did it come out through Mattel? Or uh, I think it was yeah, Mattel through a collaboration. Uh, Dark Horse was the publisher. So oh, Dark Horse did like even back then. Hmm. Even back then. Uh, no, the no. Originally it was all just in house. Okay. Through Mattel. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't think Dark Horse goes yeah. back that far. No, yeah, but they did the collaboration for this. Awesome. Um, next one to point out that I had was if you go to page four eighty five. I mean, you're gonna find cool shit on every oh, yeah. page. I mean, the whole thing is yeah. We could literally spend hours going art. through. <laughs> Four eighty-five, you said. Yeah, that's where uh, Bruce Timm's first illustrations come in. So tell us, tell us about. Uh, I mean, I could sit here and yak all day, but you know, you're the uh, you're a special guest, so you tell us why that's in, why why Bruce Timm is of. Uh, so he's another big figure from our childhood, maybe more kidhood teenage. rather than childhood. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as he helped create the Batman the animated series from the nineties. Right. And he also did a lot of Batman at the time. I was going to say, yeah. in addition to being an accomplished cartoonist at the time, and draws um, Bruce Tim draws some of the most beautiful women. I should have some laying out here that we could uh, we should be able to compare to, but I don't know that I have any of the. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, I don't think I have any of the Bruce Tim Batman stuff. No kidding. Okay. Um, so I can't I can't drop any Batmans on here and show you in comparison, but we can look at a bunch of Bruce Tim stuff. But what we were talking about before the show started was we were looking through the table of contents and uh, Bruce Tim started as the penciler and on mm -hmm. this issue there was no ink or, yeah, well he's, he's just listed he's, as artist he's listed as artist so maybe there's inks you you tell me gang get in the comments and let me know if you see ink over this but I it looks to me like it's color over pencils but there's no inker listed there's no penciler listed it's just artist Bruce Tim and then a colorist mm -hmm. and so and he does he, get a signature there on the cover so and then he he graduated and it looks like this is inked Looks like he inked this, inked um, the cover, and then the co cover was colored. But as he progresses throughout these issues, he graduates from pencilist, penciler to uh, inker, and then he disappears yeah. altogether, obviously, into the Batman <laughs> fame. Um, but you tell me if you see, um, what does this say? Uh, I think the footnote there is one of the... Mini, the this mini comic is the first one Bruce Timm illustrated on his own and some of his official first work in comics. 
this is the only time Buzz Off is characterized as someone who the other heroes don't necessarily trust because he t- tells tall tales. But if you look at this, I guess this is supposed to be Tila. Mm-hmm. If you look at this gang, and I know my camera sucks, and the closer I get, I'm gonna I'm gonna be buying a new um, uh, a new a new camera. I'm gonna try to get a document cam that's gonna allow me to like digitally zoom down into these individual panels. Oh, nice! At uh, at, at at you know high definition quality. Um, so any uh, any super thanks you drop or uh, memberships you buy that give you access to um, uh, episodes like this uh, weeks, sometimes months in advance. This is a this will come out. This episode will probably come out two weeks, around two weeks, ten days to two weeks from when we are recording it here tonight. Okay. But um, we're going to record another episode tonight that's not going to come out until November. Okay. And it's today is what the eleventh of October. Yeah. In real time, so uh, the mem- the membership is a I believe it's it's two ninety nine a month, and I think it's a it's a good value to keep ahead of of these things. And now you know we're not a big channel yet, but if we eventually get to the size of Cartoonist Kayfabe. They had what's called the kayfabe effect, where when they would do, say they did an uh, a, an episode on this amazing Masters of the Universe collection, mm-hmm. uh, Amazon would sell out of it as soon as the episode hit. Oh. And so being a channel member, and I, we're not that big yet, obviously, people watch this, they're not going to sell out of these on, on Amazon. Um, but um, in the future, as we get bigger as a channel... Uh, some of the some of the more obscure th- titles that we cover, they will sell out. People are going to go hunt them down, and they will sell out. And so, being a channel member for only two ninety nine a month, two ninety nine a month gets you first access to these videos, which means it gets you first access to those comic books. So, and those and all the, all those channel memberships and the super thanks and all that stuff and the Patreon subscriptions that all goes towards upgrading to better computers, better um, microphones, better lighting, better you know just better everything to to bring you. Um, higher quality videos because I want to be able to drill down and talk to you guys and share this stuff with you and, and ask you know do you see inks on those on this stuff because I don't from my from my um, perspective here I see a, I see pencil I see Bruce Timm's pencils and then color over the top of it which is interesting and so that's that's Bruce Timm's first uh, some of his first comic book work interesting mm-hmm. very cool and this is also the introduction of the Horde faction. Okay, so that's uh, Hordak right there. And is that, is mm-hmm. that the first appearance of Hordak? I believe so, yeah. And I've got a, there's like a glare right oh, on top right of on him. him. I can't yeah. get it off of him. There it is. Okay. Yeah, so early on, we're fighting Skeletor, we're fighting his minions, and then they start bringing in Hordak from, uh, was it, it wasn't the X dimension. It was a different dimension, though. Oh, I don't uh, remember what his dimension is. Yeah. So... We're failing the super fans here, but that's all right because uh, anybody who's a super Masters of the Universe fan can jump into the comments and let us know what dimension Hordak uh, is from. Okay, so it's the, probably the Terror Dimension or the Horror Dimension or something like that. Something like that. The Fright Zone. I know. Fright the, the place. Yeah, that's the place. But I don't think that's. The, I think that was his kingdom. Layer. Yeah. yeah. What's next? Uh, next up, uh, there's a real good three issue run that I wanted to kind of go through. Uh, that starts on page 625. And is this still Bruce Tim? Uh, this is still Bruce Tim here, yeah. Uh, this is where he's starting to graduate up the line, as you had mentioned. He's an inker on this issue? Mm-hmm. And so now that he's inking and, and he's and he's been working a little bit, 625? 625, correct. Um, you really start to see some of his... Um, too far. Yeah, too far. But yeah, this is the issue here. So now we're getting into the Snake Men stuff, like you had said. It's still so this far. is yet another faction of okay, evil so villains. Yep. And we got, is that Bruce Timm on it the is, cover yep. here? It is, yep, from 1985. Yep, Bruce Timm in 1985, and so, you know, so now we're a little more. Meeting the king of the Snake Men, so King Hiss king is going to be the main villain for this one. And he was a real cool figure. I don't know if you remember him. His, oh, yeah. his entire chest popped off. Yep. He, had the triple snakes. He had snakes for arms and yep. a snake head. Try to but yeah, some real cool colors in this one too now too. I'm sorry, gang. You can I'm tell it definitely evolved throughout the, the issues. Working on the lighting here, trying to keep it keep the glare at a minimum, but there's gonna be some there's gonna be some glare. But yeah, so we have some really, really cool Bruce Tim mm-hmm. work here. I like that skeletal a lot. Oh yeah. I know you're also a big Skeletor fan as well, so yeah. I was hoping we can get a Skeletor voice here coming up in the Terror Claws issue. There's some good, there's some good dialogue for hey you. Hey, man! <laughs> I 
don't think that's too bad. No, I liked it. But yeah, here's the what it looks like when oh, the figure yeah. whenever you pull off yeah, the yeah, chest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's awesome. It's King Hiss right there, gang. I know you remember King Hiss. He's awesome. What a figure. When a drawn by Bruce Tim. What a treat. Yeah. And I like the, the accelerated it's story pattern, too. Run! <laughs> the accelerate, yeah, because it's ten pages. Right? Yeah, yeah. So you get the conflict introduced, you get some cool action, and then you get a resolution, so... Even your greatest strength is useless against the force field around you! My alarms warned us of you were coming! You dropped right into King Hiss's trap! Hopefully they're not going to roast me in the comments about me sounding like Cockhammer. <laughs> I don't think that sounds like cock hammer. I think no. that sounds like Skeletor. That, that sounds a lot more Skeletor, yeah. Well, here we got some more. And I'm just the one to help him do it. In return, King Hiss's army will help me conquer Eternia. Now, Skeletor, focus all your power on the power pool. Yes! We will pull the snake men to us from that other dimension. Look, here they come. But there are only two of them. We need more power. More power. Let me get Lasher and Rattler. Yeah. Also cool figures. Oh, yeah. We're just going ham here. Look at this stuff. Look at this panel, gang. <laughs> he bed's all fucked up. No! I won't lose! Not to you! Ugh. Just as I hoped. When the sword was pulled from the pool, it drew its power back into itself. The doorway is sealed, but the power pool still exists. Ske Skeletor and King Hiss might find another way to open it. I'll cap the pool with this stalagmite. <laughs> this should at least slow Skeletor and King Hiss down for a while. Only in the 1980s would you trust children to know what a stalagmite is. <laughs> right. You're probably not getting that today. <laughs> Fuck no. Fuck no. And just the perfect size. Plug up that pool. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thunk. <laughs> oh, yeah. Love it. See what it like a cork. That's it. Just a yeah. couple pages. Real, in and out. Yeah. And then this Quick. next one was one of my favorites whenever I was a kid, too. 30 minute adventure. I love the terror clause. Oh, the terror. There's the terror. That's the, um, the end pages. Mm -hmm. That's the, that, uh, I wonder, is that just lifted directly? Oh, yeah, that's just lifted directly. Because you can see the, um, the same. Sn yeah. uh, what's, what's it called? Uh, right. Castle Grey Skull in the background there and everything. And the smoke on the sides of it. That's Castle Grey Skull right there. The terror clause! Strike! And are we still Bruce Tim in it? Uh, we are, yep. Okay. Welcome, my friends. As you know, it is the custom on the first day of spring to bring forth this marvelous, magical wonder for all to see. And so, um, yeah, again, we're just, we, uh, we just have Bruce Tim on artist. And again, I'm, I'm seeing that this might just be him doing heavy pencil work. Okay. And not even inking this. Coloring over his pencils. So yeah, you get the, the fabulous gem of life. <clears throat> Doesn't really look that fabulous. The symbol of happiness is given to a different Eternian farmer each year. It is his honor and duty to protect it. In return, the gem of life shall bestow upon our lands a rich, bountiful harvest. Look at all these Bruce Tim faces here. <laughs> Lovely. So you got the protector of the realm, He-Man, the most powerful man in the universe. But we're going to give this, <laughs> this gem of life to a farmer to protect for a year. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful, Adam? I wonder who will be chosen to guard the gem this year. Uh, it sure is a great day, Tila. Couldn't we uh, go hunting or fishing or something? Honestly, Adam. For royalty, you certainly have the blood of a working man. Perhaps you should take the gym this year. 
Meanwhile, <laughs> at Snake Mountain. At Snake Mountain. Skeletor peers into his mystical orb, watching the gem of life ritual with disgust. If I remember right, that ridiculous gem works only when held by a good-hearted man. Perhaps its power would be reversed in the hands of one whose heart is evil like me. It's a good plan. History has shown this to be true, sir. In years past, poor harvests have resulted when the gem is... Hold your tongue! With the gem in my possession, the lands of Eternia will yield no more crops, and I shall feast on the Eternian's misery. <laughs> Splendid, sir. Will you be leaving now? <laughs> First, I must visit my fiendish friend Spikor. He has fashioned for me a new weapon. One that will make He-Man's flying fists seem like shriveled fingers. Yeah, so Terror Claw Skeletor would fight, <laughs> face off against flying fists He-Man. I love it. <laughs> I love it. And this is, what is his name? Spikor. Spikor. And of course he had a figure too. Mm -hmm. No doubt. Was he a, uh, he's a He-Man villain, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Not a, uh, not a Shira. Not part of the Horde. Nope. I love it. I love these fucking. Claws. Claws. What, a tr what a treat. Gang, what a treat to get to see Bruce Tim draw some fucking psycho shit. Like Skeletor and fucking King Randor. <laughs> and King Randor, of course, is like, uh, I shall have the gem of life! Skeletor, don't you ever learn? <laughs> the gem is mine! Now watch as your people starve! You silly old king! And then, of course, we have, By the power of Grayskull, I have the power of... That was pretty good, too. Yeah, you know. I can't sing and I can't dance. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I he gets do this the shit. flying fist. He has a, oh, yeah, and that was, uh, didn't you squeeze his legs? Mm -hmm. And he, he, like, squeezed the, like, the, yeah, here's the figure, you squeeze his legs and his torso would swing back and forth like that. Big Daddy Cool Diesel, a.k.a. Kevin Nash. That's what he likes to say all the time. I can't sing and I can't dance, so I do this shit instead. Oh, I thought you were going to say you squeeze his legs and you punch his people. Oh, that's probably true. I don't know if you could squeeze that big motherfucker's tree trunk legs. You should be weak enough by now, He-Man. Allow me to show you my new strength. These are my Terra Claws. Impressive, No. Your new nails are interesting, Skeletor, but they're no match for my flying fists! Oof! <laughs> Ow! And it literally, the punch <laughs> knocks the the gym away and knocks the fucking uh, Terra Claws Both off, off hands. Skeletor's hands in one punch. And, of course, it pops right back into uh, He-Man's hands. The gym! No! Your greed got the best of you once again, evil one. It's the spirit of strength and goodness in Eternia's people that gives this gem its power. You must always remember, no matter how powerful your evil is, Skeletor, it can never be as strong as goodness. <laughs> what a fucking treat. What a, next time, I shall, I shall prove to you how strong I can be, He-Man. The Terra Claws will strike again! Upon He-Man's return to the festival, uh, upon He-Man's return, the festival continues with something new to celebrate. All hail Eternia's greatest hero, He-Man! He-Man! <laughs> I love it. And the masters of the universe. I love it. And now this one is really cool. I wanted to highlight it for the Monster Month. Okay. Escape, oh yeah, Escape from the Slime Pit. Hell oh, yeah. yeah. So this was an awesome toy, but, uh, Oh yeah. Yeah. It was very, very messy. Yes. 
Uh, there's a there's you a. You got to be careful what figures you use it with. Are you familiar with Pixel Dan, the YouTuber? I'm not. So Pixel Dan does a ton of uh, toy reviews. Oh yeah. And okay. his like two main lines that he loves the most are uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and He Man. Oh okay. And um, he like every Halloween he's probably doing them right now. He always un unveils either a brand new re-release or an old school like slime gimmick figure okay and um he's got and he's been doing his channel for and he's he's, he's somewhat local because he does st louis stuff all the time okay i'm just not quite sure exactly how local he is <laughs> but pixel dan is from the midwest for sure and possibly from illinois or missouri um but uh he does um great like he probably has a a, a playlist on his channel for slime stuff and he does the um the slime pit and then i believe ninja turtles did a ripoff mm -hmm. slime pit um that they had also yeah because uh, were they mattel as well the ninja uh, turtles no that that's uh playmates yes playmates yeah so they so we have the yeah, hordak here and this is uh, still bruce tim right yeah so we got this amazing yep, he's still oh he's inker this time yeah he's back to inks and who is that jim i can't see that mitchell the, jim mitchell for pencils on the pencils and then bruce tim i mean isn't this just isn't this a fucking treat gang to get to see all these awesome do you remember this figure this dude would um all oh, yeah. his limbs would pop apart mm -hmm. and you could rebuild them and you could reassemble them any way you wanted to what's his name modulock modulock i fucking love modulock he's one of my favorite one of my favorite figures from the uh Magic easy to lose some of the pieces though sure yeah i lost the whole thing i like this guy too his eyeballs pop out right, right? What was yeah that guy's mantena name? mantena yeah i love it I love that. Oh, look at this fucking. Look at this uh, close up on Hordak's eyes. Yeah. This, this Bruce Tim stuff is just a treat, man. So we also get an appearance from the rock people. Yeah, the rock people. These guys would like fold up, mm -hmm. and then you would um, you would just sort of pull, pull them apart, and they would they would open up. They were yeah, kind of an answer to a transformer in a way, but yeah. it didn't really transform I this, much. <laughs> I have this memory for like a strong memory from when I was a kid. My one of my childhood friends, uh, Michael. Uh, his mom and my mom were best friends, and they got pregnant with us around the same time, within like months of each other. Okay. And so we're we're exact, almost exactly the same age, and so I would spend a lot of time at Mike's house. And I remember, for, I don't know why this memory is so burned into my head, but the same day that I went over to his house and he had a couple of these rock guys, and I was like fascinated playing with them, turning them into rocks, open them back up. There were two movies that we watched that day at Mike's house. Oh. One of them was Prince's Purple Rain. And, okay. and so it was the first time I ever saw that. Yeah. And then the other one was um, uh, Labyrinth. Oh, wow. That was the first time I ever That's saw Labyrinth. the first time? Yeah, first time I ever saw wow. Labyrinth was the same day I saw Purple Rain, and it was the day I played for the first time with these rock, rock people these oh. rock people from the uh, Masters of the Universe line. So wow. I don't know why that is such a strong memory in my mind, hmm. but it, it comes to me, yeah. you know, quite often. That's I, a I, special day. Yeah, well, yeah, because, I mean, that you know, Labyrinth is just such a fucking amazing movie and it was um you know when you're a kid and you first discover stuff like that there's such a magic to the world oh, yeah. like to see a movie like that and you're like there's goblins and there's singing and there's these are their puppets and the um you know when those um terrifying those, hand things those yeah. hand things where they made they made mouths and out of their hand for the years eyes, yeah. for years afterwards i would make these these hand faces and talk with my hands after watching labyrinth <laughs> for the first time you um, were that kid i was that kid yeah i was well of course look yeah. at the way i'm doing uh all the voices for, the, yeah. for this stuff so he man gets nailed with the uh he gets walked up like he's being executed mm -hmm. gets put onto the and this thing is such oh, a yeah. great i love it comes out of a skull it's like yeah yeah there's the there's the full the full monty of it i don't think we get a it's not on the previous page is it uh, just from the back uh from the very first page yeah yeah you sort of see it from the back there and then as they're assembling it, it yeah. on the, but uh and it, it oozes out. That was so <laughs> cool. I love that. It transforms He Man into. Did that ever. Was there ever a slime He Man figure? I don't think so. Man, there should have been. I bet there is. I bet there's a re release where he's just green. Oh. I bet there's a green. Like a translucent green. Because they, they've made translucent figures before. Yeah. I bet there's a translucent green slime He Man. Google it real quick. That'd be sick. I bet, yeah. the, I bet, that, uh, I bet it exists. It happened to your phone. Can't remember which shelf it's on. I'm also hitting the whiskey. Bit. <laughs> yeah, no, we're we're having uh, great fun here. Couldn't think of a better place to be and a better thing to be doing than sharing uh, my love of comic books, not only with you guys but with one of my best friends in the world, Andrew. Here, um, such a gift to be able to do these shows with you, gang. I hope you guys are, you know, 
are, are, are having fun with us. Um, okay, so here it is. Let me see. Can I do this without yeah, doxing you? Yeah, that's fine. So there's the uh, translucent green <laughs> slimy man. There you go. Who really said is that? As, as, uh, Super seven. Super seven. Yeah, that's that's what I was gonna say. I couldn't get it out. <laughs> <laughs> look at that. Uh, look at that. Skeletor getting popped in the face by uh, Slimey Man. What's it called? Is it just called Slimey Man? Yeah, oh, Slimey look Man. Look at that fucking figure, gang. Look at that Super Seven figure of Slimey Man. I knew. I knew it was out there. <laughs> Can't control my anger. Hordak says destroy. I destroy. Oh, he's got the terror claws again. Yeah. Skeletor's got the terror claws. He told him. you they would strike again. Yeah, they did. Well, he struck at the wrong time. Somewhere inside of him, He-Man resists the powerful urge to harm Skeletor. No! No! Something inside of me is fighting the... I was thought it was going to be exactly the same <laughs> yeah. text. Something inside of me is fighting to break free from Hordak. From... Slime. Suddenly, spheres of dazzling light surround He-Man. It is the light of the Sun Rock. Oh. You are not a monster. Ah! You are He-Man, but the slime pit has drained your will. I still sense your longing, longing to be free. But I can't control my anger. I'm a menace. <laughs> Hear me, He-Man, because you are good. And you fight the evil inside you. My light will cleanse you of the terrible, what is that last slime. word? The terrible slime. The sphere glows and radiates intense light. Skeletor shields his eyes and backs away from its power. With his terror claws. I'm changing back. I am Heban. I love it. So now he's got the spinning shield now, too. Oh, you remember that toy? Yeah. yeah. Was that... Uh, how did you make it spin? Was it a was it a flick on his back, or was it a squeeze um, of the legs? I think you just had to spin the actual... Oh, you just spun Yeah, it was like a pinwheel. <laughs> okay. He-Man frees the rock people. Yep. And they roll away down the hill. Yes, they do. <laughs> the end. Oh, what a... What a treat. And once again, you see the good always triumphs over evil. Always. That's the lesson. Always. What else? We, what else we got? You got uh, some more uh, highlights? Here? I do. I have a couple more. Um, so page seven ninety six is our first reveal. Uh, you're in the eight hundreds, I believe. Whoops. That's our first reveal of the Eternia playset. I believe this uh, comic came packaged with the Eternia playset. Okay. So. A little bit more to go. 794, 795. Yep. There we go. There it is. Uh, Pixel Dan also has a, a nice uh, reveal of the... Because they just re-released the... The new one, Well, yeah. I guess they... What did they... They crowdfunded it maybe two years ago or something. It's been a while, yeah. Maybe more than that. And it finally shipped and everything. And okay. Pixel Dan has a real nice... Um, reveal. Reveal. Unpackaging. Like an unpackaging and then, a, and then setting it up. And, nice. Because it's got all those... Um, yeah, the, the Amtrak. Like Amtrak's that it's got where you can like hook a figure up and have it zoom, but it's also got a tram car where you can put a figure in and close it and then have the car run around it. Very cool. Nice. So yeah, the envy of all kids. Still Bruce Tim. I mean, Bruce Tim did a ton of work on this, mm -hmm. on this series. So yeah, the envy of all kids. How much did that thing run back in the 80s? 100 bucks? Uh, yeah, probably maybe 125 as will be 500 in today's money. Oh, yeah. For what, 1986, I think? They have that little yeah. thing in there. You can turn the snake head around, right? Oh, for the periscope, yeah. yeah. For the periscope. You got to milk it, man. They got to show you how to play with it. <laughs> That's what, you know, a lot, of, a lot of parents, I guess, complained in the era that these cartoons were just, like, gimmicks to sell the toys but like how cool is it to have a cartoon that sells you toys i yeah. mean i love toys and i love cartoons like <laughs> right? 
you're not telling me anything. I don't know. Like, you already sold me on it. I already want to buy it. Like, right. don't don't make it sound even cooler. It's better than the, you know, commercial advertising the cereal or whatever. Right. You eat a bowl of cereal, you're, you're done with it. You got the taste right. out. You get a cool toy, you can play with that for years. Or even the toy, the, you know, the toy commercials for uh, G.I. Joe or Thundercats or He-Man or Ninja Turtles. Mm-hmm. Those, they were always set up in, like, not full play sets, but they were always set up on some really cool terrain. Yeah, the you know, backyards right? of these kids were really neat. Yeah, compared to you know when you get them and you're just in your bedroom. <laughs> yeah, you know it's hard to set up as uh, as cool of a a playset as uh, as what the commercials for the toys did. But the cartoons, they allowed you to be completely immersed in the uh, whatever the gimmick is for, in, you know, like oh we need to sell you know we need to sell a new toy. Um, let's sell uh, this dude. Yeah, Snow Spout. Yeah, Snow Spout. Maybe we've never seen him before. Maybe that's his first appearance, and then we're going to make a toy out of him. And then I go, fuck, i got to have that. There it is. With the trams. And the side, because it comes with... Oh, that's everything, right? That's, I think uh, so, yeah. That's Castle Grayskull, mm-hmm. Eternia, Eternia, and Snake Mountain. And Snake Mountain. Snake Mountain was cool because it had that microphone mm-hmm. that you talked in uh, Skeletor's voice. And then that had all the trams and everything. I don't know if you can see that very clearly, gang. But all the uh, the, um, the tram tracks there. And then, of course, the iconic. Everybody had Castle Grey School. All right. uh, next highlight. I'm sure you remember the classic 1987 live action film of course. with Dolph Lundgren yeah. starring as He Man. Masters of the Universe. Masters from of the Canon Universe. films. So uh, each of the toys from that series, they also made toys for Sauron and Blade and. Gwildor, all the new uh, characters from the movie. That that comic starts on page 861, if you want to turn to that. And that's a quick one. It's only six pages. Okay. I don't know why they, they skimpy out on that one. but yeah, there, <laughs> there he is, Gildor. The Cosmic Key. Cosmic Key. Okay. Not a great movie, but still a fun one to watch. I don't think Eternia looks like this in, the, <laughs> in that movie, does it? I don't even know if it's in the movie. That it's all just interior. And you're just supposed to believe that it's there. Snake Mountain. Skeletor not looking as hot as uh, Bruce Tim drew him, but that's okay. Yeah. We accept all forms of of Skeletor and He Man and all the heroes. If you remember him, he shot sparks out of his mouth. He had oh, a lever yeah, on the back yeah, yeah. of him. That's right. That you pull down. Seemed dangerous to give kids a, the end. essentially yeah, a lighter. Spark, yeah, lighter. <laughs> that's it. Six yep. pages. In and out. Quick story. We gotta tie it in somehow. Yeah, there's this there's his his sparky shit coming out of his mouth. <clears throat> and then if you feel like getting frisky, we can go to that space he man reboot. That's I did mark that page. It's is that the one that's marked here? Uh, no, it's 1,075 oh. is that one. 1,020? Uh, yeah, so you gotta go... I skipped over the she stuff. I wasn't really ever a she guy, so... Other than, you know, the awesomeness of the Horde and Hordak. Yeah. One, what, 70? Uh, 1,075, yes. 75, okay. There he is. Yeah. There he is, Space, gang. Space He-Man. Space He-Man, one of the wonkiest relaunches... In toy history, complete and utter failure. I think I had like two of these toys. Yeah, they did. Not I was already kind of growing out of it anyway, too. But well, I think that was the uh, that was the fear was that the original age gra- age bracket for He Man had outgrown um, everything really, even Ninja Turtles and, and that stuff. Mm-hmm. They had grown up and out of that, and so they were trying to like reboot and reset, try to get a younger audience to be into something this is my he-man this is something different for me and it just didn't uh didn't take not only did the um cartoons suck but the uh <laughs> the, yeah, the, the, um, the toys weren't that the toys didn't either. sell for shit either so they may actually be collectible these days because they yeah. probably didn't make a very large run of them there he is that's <laughs> that's Long what live you live he-man that's what you get out of uh, Space He Man. Not very. Uh, you know, I don't know why he, he, he laid off the the uh, he cycled off the roids. <laughs> he stopped. Uh, he stopped taking gear, 
and slimmed way down. And I'm not sure what the uh, point of that was yeah. to make us wearing full pants instead of the shorts. Yeah. And... This is a cool looking skeleton. Though. Yeah, there's a few of these. Uh, yeah, only four. And then these aliens were like their version of the snake people. Yeah, yeah this dude's like an eyeball. Yeah, that guy's cool. I would have collected him. I like eyeball monsters. This thing's ridiculous. Yeah, like he was like Flog, Captain Flog. He, he looks had like a whip. A, he looks like a Flog. He had like a space whip with like is this, light. Is this man at arms? Uh, I think so, yeah. I like that fucking walker. <laughs> Alright, what's next? I don't want to go through every yeah. every single one of those. So, uh, the last one is where the bookmark is. That's the 2002 Reimagine. Oh, and yeah. You see the is... difference between <laughs> yeah. Space He-Man and the 2000s He-Man. I mean, yeah. he's, he's fucking badass. Yeah, we went from 89 to 02, so. Yeah, big jump and in then, time. Uh, this one is noted, I think oh. you get it pretty quickly here in the next page or two. Uh, Robert Kirkman actually has a, a story credit here. And uh, story and letters, I believe. Yeah, story. No, nope, this is a story by Val Staples. And okay. letters Must be on the next on. one then. Uh, yeah, Kirkman used to do letters. He did letters on the first uh, Walking Dead oh, really? set. And he eventually get, eventually let it go. But he used to do story and uh, he used to do writing. Yeah, much, much better He Man than Absolutely. the 89 Space He Man. Yes. And this is kind of what the animation. More or less, like yeah. In the, in the actual cartoon. There it is. Robert Kirkman and Val Staples <coughs> with uh, Kirkman on letters. There you go. And very cool Skeletor, obviously. So, Robert Kirkman of Walking Dead fame. Uh, I wonder if he tried to take. Uh, Full creator credit <laughs> <laughs> from Val. From, from Val on, on this E Man here. I wonder if Val had to sue him for his. Yeah, look at that E Man. He E Man went back on the gear. <laughs> he started getting his Russian supplements and started eating his horse meat again. <laughs> Very cool, man. Yeah, real fun. What a nostalgia treat. trip. Like I said, the interviews are really cool, too. They've got a lot of extra information and stuff for the fans in here, too. And it's just a really neat book. I like it a lot. And papers on the back. It's attorney of this time. It's that Castle Gray School. There it is, man. Final thoughts on the He-Man collection? Just, yeah, like I said, big nostalgia trip for me. I, I love flipping through it every once in a while. Just kind of getting that rush. Remembering some of the stories and some of the art from whenever I was a kid collecting all these. Uh, just a lot of good good memories. Hell yeah, we just made some more. Thank you for the invite, Kevin. Oh yeah, thank I you for coming it. and thank you for bringing this awesome book with you. And uh, if you at home have some of those old He-Man uh, comic books, mini comics that you want to get off your hands, uh, you can send them to Kevin Strange, PO Box Number Five, Cottage Hills, Illinois six two zero one eight. If you are a creator. And you would like to send um, some of your own comic books my way to be featured on the channel. Kevin Strange, P.O. Box number 5, Cottage Hills, Illinois, uh, 62018. Hand me that uh, comic under the uh, Skeletor figure there. Just like Dr. Ben did, you can have your uh, He-Man book back. Dr. Ben sent me uh, Image Grand Design, which is a uh, book that a bunch of... <clears throat> A bunch of artists, a bunch of fans of Cartoonist Kayfabe worked on during the uh, lockdowns in 2020 after uh, Ed Piscor and Jim Rugg on Cartoonist Kayfabe uh, said that they wanted to see uh, an image grand design similarly to the way they did um, uh, Hulk grand design and X-Men grand design, which is basically every page tells a um, an era or a particular book or whatever to try to tell you the... This, the grand design is like the vast storytelling over decades, okay. and they condense it down to a page 
uh, page each, each. So you've got a Wildcats page, and you've got a Youngblood page, and you've got, you know, um, a Spawn page. And so this is their their attempt to do a a grand design of their own. And uh, it's got all kinds of drama surrounding it, from the creation of it to the execution of it, to the release of it, to uh, when uh, Ed Piscor got canceled and then killed himself. All, uh, and then the the um, cartoonist kayfabe ringside seats uh, Facebook group that originally they were the, that was the group where this was conceived of. They completely distanced themselves from Ed Piscor and changed the entire name to Cosmic Lion Productions. So they're not even associated in any way with uh, Cartoon Escape Fave now. Crazy stuff. We're going to cover this and the drama surrounding it in its entirety. Thanks, Dr. Ben, for sending that in. Um, hope I see you guys at the dollar bin, and remember to keep on digging.